appearing in London. Hotels, restaurants and the tourism sector are warning that they'll face a recruitment crisis if European Union immigration is heavily restricted after Brexit. The British Hospitality Association says it relies on 60,000 EU workers every year and it will take a decade to recruit enough British workers to fill those jobs. John Moylan reports. Here we go. At Butlins in Bognor Regis, they're gearing up for the summer season. Around 40% of the staff here are from outside the UK, and the boss says they'd face a recruitment crisis if Brexit causes that supply of workers to be cut off. If the tap was just turned off straight away, uh, that would be very difficult. You can't, we are where we are at the moment. We rely on a third of our work base uh, from European employees. Uh, to be able to turn that straight off and replace it straight off would be very difficult. Uh, we're in the hospitality industry, we're in the service industry. You, ha you actually have to employ people who like to serve people. Tourism and hospitality accounts for around 10% of the economy. Now a new report is warning that restrictions on foreign labour could hit it harder than any other sector. The UK's hospitality sector employs around 3 million workers, but it's highly reliant upon overseas staff. 24% of the workforce are EU migrants. It could face a shortfall of 60,000 workers a year if immigration is tightly controlled. The industry wants to reduce its dependence on EU workers. Its new 10-year strategy includes recruiting more unemployed and older workers in the UK. One thing that we have to do in the United Kingdom is to actually tackle the perception of careers in our industry, which isn't necessarily the same as it is in France, Switzerland, Austria or Germany, where hospitality careers are actually seen as a career of choice. The government says that while it will end free movement as it is now, it will design a new immigration system that's in the national interest. John Moylan, BBC News. They are much easier to exploit in terms of conditions, in terms of hours, and everything else. And I came up against Kevin an example of this in 2009. I was out campaigning outside Peterborough Cathedral and I met a 16 year old girl who'd applied for a job on a packing line, you know, where they get broccoli and they put cellophane around it and it involved quite a lot of hy you know, hydraulics and moving parts and she told me she didn't get the job because she couldn't speak Polish and there was a hell of a row. Those who come, they do work. If, you know, if you can go shopping if it wasn't for actual migrant labour coming in, you wouldn't get any meat because they've taken oh, over the meat packing oh, industry. Yes, they have. Oh, they do the on. dirty job. You're not you telling wouldn't me, get people you're not in, telling you wouldn't me get before people, 2004 you, that you know, the cabbages were rotting in you, the fields you, you and nothing was happening. Help. You wouldn't get people picking crops in the same way. That's why you have the, so the casual happy, scheme. Are you happy for unskilled young British people to be forced out of work because big Lithuanian gangs now pick all the vegetables? Is that good for our country? If you, if you phrase it, big, big if, if you phrase it like that, no.